Welcome to Esoterica the Podcast's Famous Folk Series. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm Chris Schultz. I'm Eric Christian. And today, continuing in our Breaking Bad series, we have actor David Yuri. David! Probably best remembered for his role as Spooge, the meth head, uh, who gets crushed by an ATM uh, in one of the episodes <laughs> of Breaking Bad. Uh, he was also on the criminally short-lived um, Lodge 49 on AMC, which was a great series. Criminally short-lived. Oh, my God. It was so great. Two seasons canceled. Um, so check it out um, in reruns if you get a chance. So um, David was nice enough to join us, and his um, obscure album is Key Lime Pie, which was released in 1989 and was the last album that the band camper van beethoven released before breaking up this album's making me hungry chris yeah and um while it's a esoteric album uh, a lot of people may remember the song pictures of matchstick men um which was pretty popular mm, it's a cover on this album it's a popular cover at that yeah so let's check out camper van beethoven and uh, what david has to say okay before we go any further, I want to take a minute to talk about the awesome folks at Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way. In fact, it's the way that we make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. Best part, no minimum listenership. Ooh. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's so cool. I We just, we found the service. We started using it. We're making podcasts. Yeah. Making podcasts, making money, having a good time. So listen, you want to get you out there. You want to be heard. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. So I'd like to welcome our very special guest, actor and comedian, David Yuri, uh, who is here with us today to talk about his favorite obscure album. How you doing, David? Yeah. Good. I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, we're we're doing good. Enjoying quarantine or self isolation. Yep. Um, Getting through it. How's the pandemic? Where, where are you guys located? We're uh, just south of Boston. Oh, okay. So opposite coast from you. Uh, yeah. How how has life been for you in the uh, the great pandemic of 2020? Um, it's been okay. Uh. It's been good lately. I my whole family was sick for a couple weeks, pretty bad. Um, I don't know uh, if we had coronavirus or not, but we had a couple weeks of a, a rough patch. But now we're all healthy, and uh, and it's been it's been okay. It's been kind of a a, a nice way to re to sort of adjust to. A quieter life, which is, you know, not so bad. Aside from the anxiety about not having work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of I imagine that's going to be tough out in Hollywood. So pretty much all production, I would imagine, has been shut down. Yeah, unless you're a voice person with your own setup, your house. Yeah, there's no no work to be had. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen you've been busy on YouTube lately. Yeah, so that's been my my way of staying sane now is recording um, dramatic monologues of opening uh, of TV song themes from the 80s and 70s. So I've done different strokes, facts of life, um, and a... And a a bunch of others and i've got more i'm trying to do at least three a week and that sort of that's been a fun a fun way to kind of keep the acting going and also just you know give me a sort of a passion project to yep mm -hmm. sink my teeth into staying out there yeah it was funny i was listening to um your rendition of the friends theme um the other day and i think it was probably a, a good 30 or 40 seconds into it before my wife was like is that the friends theme? Well, good. That's <laughs> my goal is to make people is to confuse. That's why the one thing that's been hard is I don't name them. I don't give them a catchy name. 
or tell anybody what they are. I just say that they're quarantine monologues. And a lot of actors are doing these monologues as a way of keeping busy. So I started sort of doing this as my version of that. But not a lot of people will want to watch a random actor's monologue. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not the best marketing uh, way to try to actually get people to watch these videos. But, but my goal is always for people to not if I can, the, the longer I can get someone to watch without knowing what's going on, eating, I consider that a success. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I get accused of that a lot. I think I enjoy confusing people more than anything else. I can attest. I can attest. Yeah, yeah, Aaron can attest to that. You confound and confuse. That's always been my motto. Yeah. Was that, uh, uh, the residents had a slogan uh, amuse the muse and confuse the masses. The residents, yeah. All right. Yeah, we just actually uh, we talked to Homer Flynn, um, their manager. Last that's actually airing next week. I think. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's what kind of uh, once we got a hold of him, that kind of gave us the idea to to reach out to some famous folks and um, see what see what other people are listening to rather than what we. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. So um, usually what we do, um, Aaron and I usually take turns bringing in a, one of our favorite obscure albums, and then we just kind of discuss it. So um, I understand you have brought in uh, one of your favorite um, albums for us to discuss a bit. Yeah. And it was um, Camper Van Beethoven. Yeah. Elon Pie. So what, do you, uh, what attracted you to this album, I guess? Well, this is one of those albums that has a, a um, significance for me from my childhood where I was I guess I was in high school when this came out maybe I was 15 or so and this was just something that I listened to so much uh, and then continued to listen to you know a, a lot of things that I listened to uh, over and over again as a kid or in college, I got so tired of them that even though I might like the music, I don't really want to hear it. It's like it's, I can play every note in my mind and it doesn't really bring me pleasure anymore to hear it. But this album is one that I still listen to and even to the point where I'll like occasionally look up the guitar tabs and try to play some of the songs and um, and this band was out of, they're out of Santa Cruz. I grew up in the Bay Area, Northern California. So I got to see them play when I was in high school. And um, when, when <coughs> excuse me, when I was in um, middle school, I first heard them, um, they had a song called Take the Skinheads Bowling. And just the title of that song was enough to get me interested. <laughs> in I pay attention to these guys. Yeah. So I think I started listening to them when I was 12 or 13. So that would have been like 85, 86. I'm not sure what year that this probably came out in 88. Let's see. 89. 89. 89. So. So pre yeah. pre grunge. Um, yeah. So I was a junior in high school. Yeah, 89, uh, I think I was a sophomore in high school. Oh, and, and Aaron was far from being born. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was funny, you know, we go on Spotify because just to try and pull it up and listen to it, it's all mostly grayed out. I uh, can't, can't play any of the songs on there. So, uh, oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so it must be owned by someone who won't license it to yeah. Spotify. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we were able to find it on YouTube, and that's, uh, we listened to it, and um, I was really vibing with it, I will say, as a millennial. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I think I missed out on them when they when they were first run. I recognized pictures of Matchstick Men. Um, you know, I think that got some fair radio play during the yeah. day. It, it, yeah, that was the song that played, uh, that got some radio play, and that's a cover of a song mm -hmm. right? from, like, I don't know, from maybe the 60s. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the only song uh, that really got radio play back then. Um, 
And then the, the lead singer of, of Camper Van Beethoven went on to, to uh, have his own um, band called Cracker or just after this album, I think. And um, Yeah, I remember Cracker. I, I can't think of any of their songs right now, but I do remember them being big um, during the height of the, the whole grunge scene. Yeah, I guess it would have been early 90s. Right before Seattle got big. You got a favorite track on the album? Uh, let's see. There's a song called All Her Favorite Fruit. Um, that and Jack Ruby, those are my favorites. All Her Favorite Fruit, I met it when I was in college. I met a girl um, who was visiting and we hit it off and then she made me a mixtape. Um, she lived far away, so she was just visiting a friend there or something. And she made me a mixtape and sent it to me and that, that song was on that mixtape. I also had the CD, but I ended up listening to that song a lot more because I was playing that mixtape all the time. Yeah. That's something I miss. I, I don't think um, mixtapes are really a thing anymore. And it's, uh, I think we're lesser for that. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's funny how, I mean, I played that tape literally until it broke. And there was, you know, not just the songs, but of course the, the memory of this, you know, person that I met and the times we had together is something that I would think of every time I heard those songs. Yeah, that's cool. That was, that was one of the reasons why we uh, we came up with the idea of asking other people about albums, because I know um, I know when you're in the public spotlight, you, I, I understand people, you know, you want to keep your private life private and your public persona, you know, two separate things. But um, music is so personal yet universal. I, I know I, I have albums that I feel like I own that music. So it's kind of sometimes it's kind of cool to share that yeah and uh, i enjoy listening i said i missed out on them the first time around so it's kind of cool to get a chance to go back and listen yeah and it was, i can't remember the name of the the first track there was uh, a lot of what, what was it, it um the violin, violin um yes it, they have a yeah, violinist was, and that was one of the things that i liked about the band is that they're kind of punk rock but they're kind of you know, I mean, there's not a lot of pop bands or rock bands with a, a violinist. And they have some beautiful um, instrumental songs, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and Jack Ruby was an interesting song. I was kind of surprised that that was a subject matter that they were yeah. tackling. Yeah. Because I, I don't think they're, I, well, if they were recording in a band when we were in our teens, they're a little older than us, but I would think that... Um, the, the Oswald shooting was probably they must have been very young when that happened yeah one thing um, you know when you listen to an album a lot as soon as that album ends and there's that pause or the, a song ends and there's that pause and you you already know the next song what's coming and that sort of anticipation of of exactly what is going to come. I've noticed that hearing these songs sometimes separate on like Spotify or YouTube or something that when the song ends, that will still play in my head like what the next song on the album was. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I have a hard time with that. There's a lot of albums that I, I, I don't like listening to broken up. It's the whole album works as a whole. Yeah, and especially with Spotify and Apple Music, you lose that um, because you know, a lot of artists now release only singles, and and there's not that continuity. So you, I I still do that because I'm weird, but uh, <laughs> you lose that. It's not it's uh, it's not as cohesive and genuine. Um, in yeah, my, at least in my opinion. I can buy that. So that was cool. That was a cool album to listen to. Yeah, no, I, I really that. really enjoyed that album. It would be my new rotation. So um, I know we're all stuck in a, a period of uncertainty while this uh, current session plays out, but um, do you have any um, plans on the back burner for when we come out of this? 
Uh, not. <laughs> not really. I mean, you know, uh, my life is generally trying to go from gig to gig. And I have one thing that was sort of, I was waiting to hear on when everything's shut down. So, you know, hopefully when things pick up, that will happen. And then I'll have a gig for a while. But, um, but you know, once things get started again, I'll just be out there probably auditioning and trying to get some work. And I'm always trying to make, generate my own things. I'm writing, you know, projects with, um, right now I'm writing something with another actor from a show that I was on, on AMC called Bodge 49 that was unfortunately canceled um, in the fall. Yeah, I was really disappointed to hear that. Uh, I really like that show. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. That it, it's a, it was a really fun show to work on. And I, I really, I mean, everybody involved in the show was a real fan of the show. And so it's been sort of a prolonged period of mourning that we've all been going through to lose that show. Especially now, it feels like uh, it would have been a good quarantine show. Yeah, I think we need uh, more quirky TV. And that, that's one of the things I liked about it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe quarantine will change some minds and somehow resurrect it. That would be nice. Yeah, it was, it was funny. I didn't realize it was it got canceled. Um, I had reached out to uh, Wyatt Russell's agent, and she mentioned he was between projects. And I was like, whoa, hold on. Yeah. Um, that's the thing is a lot of people who were watching it were unaware that it was canceled or even that it was that there was a chance of it getting canceled so it was sort of a rude awakening for people who were yeah i, I think i would have read to see that continue like am uh amc's uh, walking dead i think is ready for retirement but uh, i would have liked to see lodge 49 at least put a couple more seasons in yeah it would have been nice I was it um I, I was watching a little bit of your stand up uh, earlier this morning uh, while we were getting ready to talk to you. Um, I'm just curious, do you find it? I, mean, I know being a character actor is probably a good thing because it gets you work. Um, do you find it frustrating, kind of getting pigeonholed as the um, the the crazy crackhead guy, or is that no, working for you? I mean, I actually have gotten to play quite a few. Um, fairly diverse types of characters. I do play the kind of messed out guy a lot, but, um, and the character on Lodge 49 was a kind of a modified version of that, but the character I played on Lodge 49 was pretty, was quite different than anything I'd played yeah. before. It was a sort of a anti-capitalist, um, kind of a punk rock security guard. <laughs> um, and then I got, I've gotten to play some, you know, fun stuff on some kids TV shows and movies. And so I don't, I really don't. Um, and I don't have, and I consider myself pretty lucky to be a character actor because, you know, there's always, there's always work for us. And the older and uglier we get, <laughs> the more character you have. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I have a, a lot of friends who are, you know, leading men, leading women, and and uh, I know that that's not an easy road either for most working actors, so. I have never, no, I have never, ever thought like, oh, why did I have to get stuck playing these kinds of roles? Um, no, I feel I feel pretty lucky to be. And you're good at it. even be, you know like Spooge, that probably you're you're one of your more well known roles. I think you bring a lot more to that than the the stereotype. For the for the short period of time you're on, it's a well rounded character. Yeah, I mean, I always thought Spooge was kind of a funny character, despite how gruesome and awful the you know that's an. Uh, 
a horrible story and a horrible character, but it's still kind of comedic. There are some like comedic moments in that episode. Um, yeah, Vince. Vince is got a, a knack for that um, dark, yeah. dark, dark humor. So. so, so that's the thing is, you know, it's not. A lot of times, people ask like, "What sort of role would you like to play?" And to me, it's 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 never really about like the kind of role. It's more about the writing and the quality of writing. I don't really care what the character is as long as the writing is good if the writing is good then it's fun to play it doesn't matter really what character you are yeah it's something good to work uh, with yeah awesome and i noticed that uh, you have a children's book out yes i do or, or actually an adult a children's book for adults I... right yes it's called everybody dies a children's book for grown-ups um, it was something that was originally self-published and then, uh, Harper Collins picked it up and added, we added some extra pages and that came out in quite a while ago, like five years ago. I think it's available on Amazon still. Well, yeah. um, thank you um, very much right. for sen spending some time with us today. We appreciate yeah, thank it. You yeah, thank you guys. Um, yeah. Look forward to, to hearing your podcast. And I hope you guys have a lot of fun, get a lot of good people to interview and talk to. And stay safe there. All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll shoot you a line when we put this up on the air. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank hey, you. you too. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> um dave's a cool guy yeah uh, it was really uh fun getting to do uh three characters from breaking bad mm. uh, it'd be it'd be cool if we can grab some more in the future but i feel like that was a good run it was a good run well i mean if that's foreshadowing anything not to say who we're gonna have next but on our next famous folk we're breaking away from breaking bad tradition yes and, so uh, uh, we'll be moving on to something a little different yeah so yeah. check us out uh on wednesday yes. for our regular scheduled podcast yeah, hobo johnson and the love maker cool uh and we'll also be uh telling you who's coming up next on our famous folks so yes tune in yeah. and uh remember to check us out at esoterica the podcast have a good weekend